Hey, what's up everyone? Today we are going to be doing a weathering video for the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest number two, hosted by Ron's Trains and Things and sponsored by Midwest Model Railroad. So today we have this beautiful Athern ready to roll 30,000 gallon ethanol tank car. And what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna be weathering it. So we'll just give you a quick rundown. I'm gonna throw up a prototype photo just so you can see what we're gonna be achieving. So it's a pretty crazy car. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, the main spotting feature of this car is this yellow, um, I believe it's like a sulfur cake up or something, but um, you know, this car has got this incredible yellow cake on the top side, a little bit of graffiti, some patchwork, so um, a little bit of rusting on the top side. So we are gonna try and to achieve that today. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove some of the factory decals we're gonna have to tape out some of the areas we want to keep like the the side striping and this um the dot table um then we're gonna have to do a fade in the car get that uh dark black finish off get a nice white light gray in there then we're gonna have to actually paint on the yellow get some rust on there throw up some grime for the you know our earth colors and our rust colors we're gonna do the trucks do the wheel sets throw some powders on there um have some graffiti, and then we'll put the decals back on and we'll be good to go. So we have quite a bit to go through, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be actually spraying a gloss coat on the car, and this is just gonna be able to allow the paints and the powders to stick a little bit better to the actual car. The next thing that we have to do is remove the old road name and road number, and we're gonna be doing this by applying Microsol to the decals that we wanna remove. We're going to gently scrub it with a nano brush. After it's been scrubbing for about a minute, minute and a half, we're going to switch from the nano brush to actual Q-tip and go for a little bit more hard scrubbing. Scrubbing with the Q-tip only takes a few seconds to actually scrub off the affected areas. And you don't really have to worry too much about it taking the paint off as long as you're using just a little bit of the Microsol and you're not scrubbing too hard. This will leave like a buffed out area, kind of where there's a matte finish. And we can gently remove this by applying a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to the affected area. Once you remove all the decals that you don't want, it's time to actually save the decals that are on the original model that you want to see on the final product. Some of the things that you might want to see is the road name, road number, reflector striping, and other um, smaller info tags on the car. So for this particular model, what we're gonna be saving is the reflective striping, the DOT table, some of the information on the bulkhead, and then on some of the prototype photos I've seen, it looks like they did patchwork on portions of the car. So we're gonna actually patch over some of the other parts and we'll show that here in the next clip. But um, the big one for this is the reflective striping. So what we're gonna be doing is just taking some tapia masca tape and we're gonna put it over the reflective striping and to kind of get that simulated look, if we take a look back at the prototype photo, you can see that they have the new reflective striping and there's black marks on the side where they kind of painted the tank car and the, the area that they painted was a little bit larger than the actual reflective striping, giving the illusion that, you know, there's a black outline. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be masking the reflective striping a little bit over and this should give us the nice um, over the black overspray that we're looking for. We're also going to be patching over the DOT table just so that we don't have to, you know, waste the decal and, you know, put a new one on when we can just save the original. And then, like I said, the ones on the bulkhead. And we are going to put just kind of this random patch here on the left side of the car just to make it look like they maybe made a repair or, you know, they wanted to kind of chip off the sulfur, I think. And then, you know, we have a nice black finish on the final product. The next thing that we have to do is we actually have to fade the base color of the car down. And we're going to be taking that dark black color to that battleship gray that we see in the prototype photo. So in order to do this, we are going to be making a white wash and we're just using cheap acrylic paint. We're using about one drop of that to about 20 to 30 drops of water, depending on how, um, how thick you like your mixture. So you're wanting to go for a milky um, consistency and then you just put that straight in your airbrush. So we're going to start spraying just that fade mixture onto the tank car, kind of doing one or two stripes and then going to the other side of the car, doing one or two stripes and then letting it cool down. So uh, this takes about 20 to 30 uh, passes on each side. So 
quite a bit of time. You can speed this up a little bit by using a hairdryer and then just be careful about melting parts on your car. Not that I've done that before, but so you can get um, a real good fade really quickly by using this method and overall it looks pretty good and it takes it from that deep black color to the consistency we're looking for. So that kind of that battleship gray. And what I like about this method is you can kind of do it in patches. So maybe the one side of the tank car is a little bit darker. So you just do less uh, fades over there. Maybe the, you know, the right side of the tank car is a little bit more white, a little bit more gray. And you can kind of just do a few more passes on that one side of the tank car and overall just get the actual fade a little bit different. Kind of add some variety to your fade. So uh, we got the car looking good at this point and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so now we actually have to start getting the car yellow. We're going to be using this Model Masters acrylic paint in the Insignia Yellow, just straight from the bottle. And we're going to be spraying the big areas of the top of the tank car. We're going to spray the top. And then we're just going to go ahead a little bit later on we're going to go back with an actual paintbrush or a sponge brush and kind of blot the edges so that you don't really see that transition of spray paint to non-spray paint how you get that kind of that um, diffusion through the paint and kind of make it more defined so it actually looks like materials falling off or caking up so we're going to go ahead and just spray it make sure that there's not any um, bubbles or gaps or anything just a nice even coat and then we're going to go ahead and put on the paintbrush and start blotting those edges all right so you can see i start on the left side of the car and we're going to be doing the right side of the car and i did that just in case i messed up so the key to this is to do it in small even strokes and to make sure that you don't put a ton of paint on starts running and it'll look bad so you know it's better to do two or three kind of more translucent strokes with your paintbrush than it is to do one big one that matches, you know, your top of your, your spray brush. So, uh, the other thing to worry about is, you know, it's going to look different. You're going to be able to see where you actually did the actual blotting and where the actual spray is. So don't worry about that. It'll kind of all even out the end. And if you need to hide it, you can hide it. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about it, but if you're just doing it in small, easy strokes, you know, that's fine. And then the other key piece of advice is, you know just kind of make sure it's going to be hard to you know uh, kind of make it look random but not too random and you kind of want it to be even uniform as i'm looking at this prototype photo it's pretty uniform so um, whatever you think looks best but i kind of um, try to make it as different as possible but um, for the car there was quite a bit of um, you know very similar looking lines on this you know sulfur cake up the next thing that we're going to be tackling is this rusting on the roof and we're going to be actually using this oil paint. So I picked this up at Hobby Lobby and I just checked it the other day and they don't sell it anymore, but you can probably still find it or find something similar to it. But I really enjoy this because you can kind of lay the paint on pretty thick and it'll look like deep rust. And if you kind of, you know, use a little bit of paint, it looks like light rust. So it's pretty versatile. Uh, the only downside to it is it's an oil paint. so. You have to kind of get the oil thinner and it you know it takes forever to dry so it may take two or three days of drying so don't think you know you can just you know pop this up real easy um this is kind of more of a you know paint it and then you got to leave it for a few days so uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be blotting it on random you know random spots on the top of the tank car and then kind of as we get closer to the edge of the tank car, as we start going more down on the side of the tank car, we're going to kind of take the brush and just make it look like it's starting to streak down as you would, you know, as the rain pools up on the tank car, it would start to streak down. So that's all we're doing. Super simple, guys. Doesn't have to look crazy. You know, just, you know, once again, doing those random, not so random type uh, weathering patterns. One of the ways to save time while you're actually weathering is to do your trucks and your wheel sets while you're doing your car body. So we're at the point where we're going to start doing the grime phase of the car body. And this is a good time to actually get the trucks and the wheels out and start weathering those too as well. So we're going to be using the Model Masters Railroad Tie Brown. If anyone knows, this is my favorite color. Uh, it looks good in almost any weather conditioning, um, you know, any part of the country. It's just the generic brown mud grime look. So it looks good almost anything. And we're going to be using it in this one. And it's kind of just like that generic, 
you know, underside of the car. So we're going to be using it on the underside and the trucks. I showed a little clip of the beginning of the segment. The left side of the truck had the brown on it and the right one was, you know, your plain black one. So we're going to go ahead and just completely spray the truck in that railroad type brown. And then we're going to start working on the actual car body. So uh, the key parts of the car body to watch out for is the kick up. So, you know, just follow the lines of the wheels, you know, follow where the kick up would be. And if it's a muddy rail, you know, it's going to kick up dirt and sling onto the car body in kind of a straight line. And you'll see that on like containers really well. But for this gun, we're going to focus mostly on that grime right there. And we're going to just cover up a little bit other of the other parts too. And then one other thing we can do while we're actually using this grime is kind of control this yellow mist. So we had a little bit of overspray on the actual yellow. So we're just going to use this railroad tie brown and kind of knock back some of that uh, brown, kind of hide some of the overspray and overall. Um, you know, if you're not sure how to weather a car, you're not sure what to do, this railroad tie brown is just a great catch-all for basically any sort of weathering condition. So... So the other major portion of the actual grime is the rusting. So we're going to start with the wheels, kind of save some time here. And we're just going to do one or two little coats, flip it around to the other side, do another one or two little coats. So uh, we're going to do this about three, four times because you want a few coats on the wheels. The wheels are where you're going to get a lot of kick up, a lot of, you know, nicks and scratches. So you want to kind of have a few layers of uh, rust on there. So. Uh, there's not a whole lot to that. You know, you're just spraying the wheels, making sure they got a nice, even coating. We're going to move on to the trucks. And we're looking at the prototype photo, which they have a lot of rusting on the roller bearings and on the springs. So we're just going to give those a touch. It's a little bit difficult with this airbrush. It's not super uh, precise. So we're just going to give it a tiny little splash on the roller bearings and then on the springs. And then we are going to move over to the actual body. So... What we're going to be doing here is there's, um, from the prototype photo, we have some kick up on the sides of the car and on the underbody. So we're just going to take the rust color, kind of go up and down on the, the kick up, kind of mimicking where we did that railroad tie brown and looking at that, making sure it looks good. Um, you know, on that kick up, it's going to be throwing up watery, you know, oily, dirty mud, and then your underbody is going to start rusting. So, you know, I like to give it just a once over, kind of throw some rust colors in there. Even if you don't see it, it's probably there. And then we are just going to use this just to touch up the rust on the top um, using the paintbrush from the oil paint. So um, I like to throw in different colors of rust. Every manufacturer has its own rust color. So um, throwing multiple colors in there really adds the depth and the realism. So um, nothing too crazy on that. Just kind of throwing, you know, rust colors everywhere just because there's rust everywhere. So. We'll go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, so the last thing that we're going to be using are these AIM weathering powders. So if you don't use them, um, they're a pretty good product. I really like them. What they're really good at is they're really good at blending a few different techniques together and kind of just making the whole product look really uh, uniform and looking um, more natural, kind of there's no harsh edges. So we're going to be using them on the trucks and the wheels here first. And what we got on the trucks are we're going to be um, we have a little bit of overspray from the spray gun just on the roller bearings and the springs. So we're just going to kind of tone that down a little bit, kind of make it seem like the rust is just secluded to those two spots. So that's all we got for the trucks. And then for the wheels, we do want to make the rusty wheels look a, bit, a little bit more um, road use. So we're just going to take the, um, it's the earth color and we're just going to go ahead and just, you know, wipe it in the inside of the wheel really quick. And this is going to give us a really good color. And this is what I use for all my rail cars is that rust base and then the AIM weathering powders as the topper. And overall, you just get a really natural, good looking rusty wheel color. All right. So the last little bit, what we're going to talk about is the actual graffiti of the car. So looking on these, there's not a whole lot of graffiti on any of the prototype photos I've seen. The one little bit on our actual car is just those yellow bubble letters. So... I used the same yellow as the cake up and then just went really steady and then didn't took my time and got those done. So um, I really like it with the graffiti. I went ahead and took some yellow paint and some white paint and just added some more, um, you know, really quick, really easy chalk 
uh, graffiti along the side of the car. Doesn't have to make sense, you know. A lot of times I just go through and I make little random lines. And by the time you're done, you know, it looks like some sort of symbol or whatever. So it works for me. I like it. I think it looks good. Sometimes you draw a smiley face or whatever. Um, you can do, you know, whatever you want. Um, sometimes I like to do my initials on it. But uh, the other thing I will mention is that on this specific car, white is a little bit harder to do just because... Uh, they don't make pens that are white for like a little ballpoint pen. On the case of a white car, you could use black ones that are really easy to find. And then uh, the white paint is really hard to show up. I think for the yellow, I had to do two or three coats, which is tough just keeping my hands steady, kind of going over the lines again, not making sure not to mess up. But if you do mess up, you can just take a toothpick, kind of wet it with your tongue, and then scrape it off pretty easy. But um, so for that fine line detail, the white is pretty tough to do. So try to avoid that if you can, but nonetheless, I thought it turned out pretty well. So, all right. So now that we have the whole car weathered, we can actually go ahead and put the decals back on. So, um, I used two different decals here on one of the sides of the cars, the actual, I did a little patch to make it look like the car had been patched and there was new paint. So I went ahead and did a, like a, just a quick stencil style that's different from the rest of the car and I thought that was pretty neat. So the two different sides of the car have two different styles of uh, decals and I thought, you know, that was kind of interesting, kind of a nice, neat little backstory. So um, I'm not gonna go into the details on how to do that. Uh, there's multiple videos on how to do that. It's pretty simple stuff. So um, overall the decals I thought were pretty, you know, they did pretty good. Um, I really liked, um, and I included in the video here, I really liked taking off the, the masking tape at the very end and just seeing, you know, the perfect little stencils and the patch outs and how they turned out great. So um, I did notice on a few of them, there was kind of bleed out from, you know, paint running in. And what you can do to fix that is the same as the graffiti is you just take a wet Q-tip or a wet um, uh, toothpick and you can kind of um, just kind of scrub it a little bit and it should come off pretty easy. So uh, nothing too crazy, you know, stencils turned out really well. So um, what we're going to do now is just go take it over to the turntable, do a quick little run through of it, and then we'll go ahead and do some run by shots and we'll be done. So overall, pretty great car guys. And we'll go ahead and go into the final thoughts. All right, guys. So here is the finished model. I'm really excited about it. I'm actually really glad I did it. Um, kind of took a personal challenge to went out and go do a little bit more of a difficult car. So I thought um, for how this turned out, I thought it went really um, pretty well. I was pretty nervous about the yellow and how that went, but overall I thought this turned out really good. Um, I really enjoyed the, the patch outs on the car, so you can see right there, and these ones on the bulkheads. Um, you know, another portion I really like is that uh, this side has a different kind of, you know, it looks like they patched it over and they just did like a quick stencil for these reporting marks, and the other side is different, so. Uh, the rust turned out pretty well, I thought. Um, could have done that a little bit better, but nonetheless, I like all the colors on the bottom. I thought they turned out well. The graffiti looks good. So overall, I'm really happy about this car. Um, I'm definitely, you know, not going to put it in storage and not look at it. And it's definitely going to be a runner on my layout. So we're going to go ahead, put it on the track, and we'll go ahead and get some run-by shots before we head out. 